What do you do when you see Adler from Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War chugging game fuel? Or a Halo 4 Spartan chugging some Mountain Dew and lifting up a Warthog randomly? We got Nathan Drake and Subway, Skate, and the sidekick phones? Heck, we even have Obama! It is awesome, and also really weird whenever video games do some interesting marketing crossover or tie-in in some way or another. And there are so many examples, and we wanted to look at some of the most interesting and bizarre ones that have ever existed. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do. But first, we have to do our own special little crossover tie-in. We got bills to pay, man. So we actually have a sponsor for today, which is Opera GX. If you're tired of boring browsers hogging up your PC resources, then Opera GX is perfect for you. Opera GX's GX control feature lets you limit how much CPU or RAM the browser uses, and you can literally select how much resources you want Opera to use. In the sidebar, you just set it and boom. You can adjust it so you have more resources on your computer for gaming and less lag and frame drops. You'd be surprised how much other internet browsers can take up resources that could be used for your gaming experience. If you think that's cool, wait till you see GX Mods. You can completely customize your browsing experience. There are themes that change and add things like background music, keyboard sounds, opening and closing tab sounds, colors, wallpapers, all easily downloadable from the GX store. And I really love all the themed content like this Cyberdeck mod. It gives your browser this clean, futuristic cyberpunk feel with this animated wallpaper. It has futuristic sound effects. It has a lo-fi background music that really rounds it out. You can mix and match any feature from any mod to fully customize the browser any way that you want. But by far my favorite feature is the VPN access that they give. Being able to just turn on a VPN to have privacy without having to pay any money is an awesome feature that Opera GX offers. And on top of that, Opera GX is also compatible with every Google Chrome extension. Luke and I have both been using this as our default browser for a while and honestly, it's pretty great. Go ahead and click the link down below and download Opera GX today and take your browsing to the next level. Okay, you know, right before the era of iPhones, being popular and smartphones coming right around the early 2010s. It was very interesting to see how over the course of the 2000s, phones had evolved to almost become that same level of what we see with smartphones, but never quite grasping the essence of that all-in-one device. The Sidekick was easily one of the coolest pre-smartphone phones that you could have back in the day. This had everything you needed. It had a cool big screen. It had a full slide-out keyboard. You could text and talk. It even had a 0.3 megapixel camera. What more could you ask for? And these phones were really popular during the time and had a couple of different iterations over the years. And I guess in an attempt to get more young people as teenagers were readily getting phones back in the late 2000s and that was kind of like a newer thing. Why not do some video game tie-ins to make this phone more noticeable? That's where EA's skate games came into play and oh boy did this phone get plastered all over the place. T-Mobile must have paid top dollar here because the T-Mobile Sidekick is everywhere. There are billboards. It's literally the phone you get to use in the game. T-Mobile even had themselves as a in-game sponsor of like fictional tournaments in the skate games. And it was pretty clever for 2007 through 2010. But I don't know if anything can compare to what Mountain Dew has done over the last two decades when it comes to video games and their brand tie-ins. Now Mountain Dew has had working relationships with a ton of different gaming publishers over the years. More recently in Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, Mountain Dew has like a straight up commercial and in Black Ops Cold War's campaign and multiplayer levels you can find retro Mountain Dew literally all over the place. You can also find retro Doritos which is kind of funny too. But yo, Mountain Dew's been doing this stuff for a long time. They did Halo 3 with the special game fuel flavor that had the big crossover with Halo 3 marketing all over it, which was such a big deal back in the day and recently has been brought back. They did a crossover for Halo Reach where they showed different flavors of Mountain Dew inspired by, I guess, Noble Team or something? This commercial was kind of wild. Even before all of this, if you ever played the game Rush 2, it was like this extreme racing game, there were Mountain Dew cans that were collectibles that you could find. We mentioned this one earlier, but of course, Halo 4 went hard when it came to Mountain Dew, and its commercials doing this like in-game looking commercial that made it look like it was Halo 4 gameplay, but Mountain Dew was there. After the success of the original Halo 3 game fuel, there was a special World of Warcraft Mountain Dew game fuel that they did, back when game fuel was a Mountain Dew thing. And then for years, games like the original Modern Warfare 3, Advanced Warfare, Black Ops 3, a bunch of Call of Duty games did something promoting Mountain Dew in a cross-promotion, whether it was 
was just in the commercials or a mix of doing like a in-game asset thing with Mountain Dew to make a commercial. There's a lot of tie-ins and crossovers that Call of Duty and Mountain Dew did over the years. Like there's this zombies one, for example. People want to know how I'm surviving these Call of Duty Black Ops 3 zombies. It's not about fancy weapons or running fast. I'm going to tell you what you got to do. Drink Mountain Dew. What? Not now? That don't destroy zombies. Yes, it do. Do gives you XP times dose. Do it. See you later, Doug. I do have to say though, out of all of these, for Call of Duty Vanguard, a World War II themed Call of Duty, just seeing these World War II soldiers drinking Mountain Dew is something else, I guess. Hi, Greg. Hi, Greg. Great, great. Hey, team. You need this. We need this. Back. Nonetheless, after the success of the original Game Fuel run, I guess under Mountain Dew, Mountain Dew decided to rebrand Game Fuel as its own separate energy drink, which is where we also would see this promoted in Call of Duty Cold War, the one with Adler this time. And then, of course, as we mentioned, the most recent use of the Game Fuel branding is in Halo Infinite, where Halo did this huge recent crossover, bringing back the OG Game Fuel flavor and doing a map crossover event, bringing some new forged maps back back to life in Halo Infinite and heavily inspired by Mountain Dew, which, hey, if Halo Infinite gets more maps, that's a big win. I didn't expect Mountain Dew to be the ones to bring that to life, but hey, why not utilize the forging community and Mountain Dew together? There was something really special about Mountain Dew game fuel marketing back in the day. Like, I have this whole thing here. I don't know, I think it's really interesting how Mountain Dew just really has targeted gaming audiences over the years. Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker even had a Mountain Dew crossover where Snake drinks Mountain Dew and also eats Doritos. There's definitely more instances of Mountain Dew doing special crossovers to promote video game stuff or console releases, and Mountain Dew has been on top of that. But other brands have tried to jump into the gaming market as well, even if it seems very odd or in a weird way of tying things together. Mountain Dew's done it long enough where we're used to it, but then sometimes the brand comes out of nowhere and we're like, what is going on here? Like, for instance, Luke had this experience when he played Final Fantasy 15. Yeah, if you make it decently far into Final Fantasy 15, being level 35 and being in Chapter 8, you actually are able to start a quest called the Perfect Cup. In this quest, you must choose the best ingredients to create the ultimate cup noodles. And honestly, the scene starts off really weirdly with the characters actually having a conversation about the cup noodles. It's like straight up an ad of the characters talking about it being like hey i love cup noodles and i think one of the characters even says something like it's the ultimate flavor experience if you take something already delicious like cup noodles and add in the finest freshest ingredients what do you get the ultimate flavor experience i mean cup noodles are fine but I don't know if I would call them the ultimate flavor experience. Nonetheless, there was more crossover in this. There was also billboards and advertisements. Obviously, cup noodles were an item in the game. And even beyond the game, there were these special edition Final Fantasy branded cup noodles being sold in stores in Japan. And if you bought 15 Final Fantasy themed cup noodles, you could enter a contest to win the Ultima Weapon Fork, which is like a big fork with a sword handle at the end. Looks kind of metal. I wonder if anyone ever won these. On the slim chance that anyone is watching this that won this, you should tweet us a picture and i mean this is a pretty deep integration with like a whole quest line and even cutscenes and characters being voiced to talk about this it just seems pretty wild to me i don't know if i can make up my mind how i feel about it i think on one hand it's kind of cool but on the other hand it's also kind of cringe almost but hey whatever but then of course besides call of duty and their close relationship with mountain dew they've done so much over the years for brand tie-ins maybe even doing too much but that's not gonna stop them anytime soon to Tino pizza rolls, bam, throw them a Call of Duty deal and give them a pizza roll skin for in-game. Do you guys remember way back the Monster Assault flavor? They did some tie-ins for video games with that back in the day, and honestly, Monster Assaults, they're not as readily available nowadays. It depends where you are in the country. But that Cherry Monster did taste good, even if it wasn't promoting Call of Duty still, or I think it even promoted Battlefield Bad Company 2 at some point. Call of Duty Black Ops even had a line of Jeeps. Just, you could buy a Black Ops Jeep if you wanted. They also put the Jeep in Black Ops 1, which didn't really make sense because it's like a historical time period and they would put like a modern Jeep in, but I guess it didn't stop them. Way, way back in the earliest days to help promote NVIDIA, we actually saw an interesting crossover with Halo common evolved to be specific where we saw like an in-game render advertisement for nvidia cards this was like the early years of the rise of machinima videos where 
people would use in-game character models to make funny videos or whatever. So I guess Nvidia wanted to capitalize on that, so they made this deal with Halo to make something very professional, but also goofy and funny at the same time. And it kind of holds up. It's a little unexpected seeing it nowadays, but yeah, this was an early example of what we see pretty commonplace across the board. I mean, Halo kind of has the reputation of doing anything and everything when it comes to brand tie-ins. There was like a Halo 3 Pontiac that you could buy. Halo Infinite was... <laughs> A little bit of an awkward situation because they set up all of these very massive brand tie-ins with a ton of different companies where players would be able to unlock in-game skins and cosmetics but then Halo Infinite got delayed but all of these brand tie-ins were already locked in for the fall of 2020 so all of a sudden a year before Halo Infinite was set to release there were monster energy drink tie-ins cookie tie-ins honestly I'm surprised we didn't even see like Bed Bath & Beyond tie-ins at that point with how much Halo Infinite was just everywhere and the game still wasn't going to be out for a year. I even remember watching this Taco Bell commercial that had Master Chief using his grappling hook, which was something we barely even knew how it worked yet, and here we were seeing it in a Taco Bell commercial of all places. I guess 343 and Microsoft jumped the gun when it came to Halo Infinite with some tie-ins. You know, Sonic Adventure 2 though is kind of interesting. This game, they actually redesigned Sonic's shoes himself from Sonic Adventure 1 to Sonic Adventure 2 so that he could have these cool special grinding shoes which were actually designed after the real world product Scorcher shoes designed by Soap. This was essentially an entire brand that specialized in shoes that were made for the sport of grinding, which is where you like run around and grind on rails with your shoes. And I guess since Sonic does that now in the 3D Sonic games, starting with Sonic Adventure, they thought that Sonic Adventure 2 would be a great opportunity to do some little cross promotion, and thus Sonic shoes would be upgraded for one game to have this special soap integration. It is interesting, if you look at pre-development footage from Sonic Adventure 2, you'll find that Sonic originally just had his normal shoes on, but they specially changed it towards the end of development just for this little tie-in and uh yeah i guess this lives on in our minds forever now i do wonder if you could still buy soap shoes do they they still make grinding shoes nowadays i don't even know i made our editor sauce look it up and this is what i found okay when nathan drake 3 was getting ready to release out of all the brands to jump on board with a big playstation 3 exclusive game being set to release that was much anticipated i didn't even expect subway to do this with their tie-in brand Ending. I mean, it's interesting, right? Like we have Nathan Drake literally endorsing Subway with what they make look like cutscenes from the game, but obviously, you know, that's not actually what's going on here. But I would just love it if in a game one day, we just get a really corny product placement tie-in where Nathan Drake turns the camera and just randomly shouts out Subway or something. I, I, I know that would never happen, but still this commercial at least started painting that illusion in our heads that one day that could be possible because I mean, this commercial does go hard. It, it is wild. I mean, over the years, there's been very interesting attempts to do tie-ins in one way or another. When Halo 4 was getting set to release back in 2012, 7-Eleven did this massive tie-in where, no, you don't just need to go to 7-Eleven to get the special Mountain Dew Slurpee flavor. You need to get the 7-Eleven Halo 4 game. They did a whole mobile game based on Halo to promote 7-Eleven stores. And it was interesting. You had to, like, go to 7-Eleven stores to interact, but the gameplay looked kind of like Halo. I don't know how many people actually participated in this, but I do find it very fascinating that there was a Halo-inspired game for mobile devices that was first person and made by 7-Eleven of all places, of course. To be fair though, 7-Eleven has had a long history of doing video game tie-ins, having special Slurpee flavors to promote new games releasing. So I guess they wanted to take it a step further with Halo 4, and Halo 4 was very anticipated at the time, so it made sense, I think, but this mobile app was kind of weird. In more recent years, Death Stranding did some interesting things when it came to product placement in the actual video game. In various parts of Death Stranding, Monster Energy shows up, uh, you know, just the go-to drink in this universe. Also, there's like a mug or something that promotes the AMC television show Ride with Norman Reedus. I've never seen the show, but I assume it's a show with Norman Reedus from The Walking Dead talking about how he likes motorcycles and stuff. I guess it makes sense because Norman Reedus stars in this game, but at the same time, it is goofy just seeing that this was an advertisement literally modeled and placed into the game. It's almost as goofy as the fact that Monster Energy is everywhere too. Hey, Editor Sauce here. I just wanted to also point out that in 2017, Titanfall did a crossover with Buffalo Wild Wings to get like double XP or something. 
just thought that was crazy, but back to the video. Another interesting thing is Nintendo themselves, honestly, they rarely ever do brand crossover things like this, where the brand shows up in the game. I mean, they might team up with companies to do merchandise or something, but for in-game situations, it's pretty rare. So back during the Wii U days, it was really surprising when we found out that Mario Kart 8 was going to have this big Mercedes-Benz tie-in. I mean, we'll talk about racing games because they do a lot of brand tie-ins with car companies and whatnot, but Mario Kart was definitely not one of the big racing games we thought would actually do something like this, but it was interesting, I guess. We did get these little Mercedes cars that we could drive in Mario Kart, and I guess we're thankful for that. Okay, back when I was a kid, I definitely thought that Nintendo and Jiffy Lube had some sort of special brand deal going on or something. I could never tell the difference between the two logos. I couldn't read, but yeah, I mean, the logos did look similar. I don't know what that has to do with Mario Kart. The only other real time I can think of a Nintendo game doing something like this would be way back in the N64 days with the game Wave Race 64, where there were like Kawasaki signs in the racetracks that you could see in the background. Interestingly enough, that marketing crossover expired by the time that the game was re-released on the Wii Virtual Console. So all of the posters and stuff that were in the racetracks were rebranded to just advertisements for the Nintendo Wii and the Nintendo DS, which I think is funnier than if they would have just left the original advertisements in there instead. But yeah, I'll be honest, I'm kind of surprised we haven't seen an in-game cutscene of Mario chugging some Mountain Dew or something. I'm sure if Mountain Dew could get in contact with Nintendo to make that happen, they would have by now. But I think Nintendo is usually pretty strict on what type of tie-ins and crossovers they're willing to associate with their brands, and that's why it makes it so interesting whenever there is something like this that shows up on a Nintendo console. Now we see Monster Energy show up up from time to time, I guess, like we saw with Death Stranding, but Luke actually noticed in this game Judge Dread versus Death, Red Bull shows up. In the early 2000s, a game called Judge Dread, Dread versus Death released, and it had a pretty big tie-in with Red Bull. On one of the levels that are set at some docks, it features a ton of Red Bull crates, as in like in-universe items, and in the cutscene leading up to the level, Judge Dread runs over a Red Bull can, and it lands perfectly right in front of the camera. There's also some Easter eggs hidden, like Red Bull graffiti that you can find on that level and i mean this is a game all about a dystopian future so why not include some real life product like red bull as an advertisement product placement within the game but i mean that was kind of it it didn't really affect the overall game that much alan wake finally got a sequel after all of these years and one thing that's interesting is back in 2010 when alan wake first released we also saw some interesting little tie-ins here and there that i will say out of all of the tie-ins that we've seen these are probably the most clever Ever because they do kind of make sense in the context of this game and I don't know I just think it's really smart how they did this one okay if you've ever played Island Wake you know that the main purpose of the game is your flashlight is like part of your weapon and using the light is essential for surviving and destroying enemies along the way however your flashlight also can die very easily so you need to collect batteries so boom Alan Wake capitalized on this and set up a deal with Energizer so that all the batteries that you need for survival survival are energizer batteries. Then, secondly, this game takes place like way out in the forests on some island near Washington State. The game opens up with you on a ferry just going like way out there. You would assume a place all the way out there would have the worst cell service because of just the location alone. So what do they do? Boom! Sponsored by Verizon Wireless. Anytime a phone is working, it's because Verizon Wireless, I guess, is uh, providing that service. So they landed two very very clever brand deals that did tie into the narrative and universe relatively well in unique ways, though in the remastered versions of the game, the brand deals were removed, as I guess they didn't renew them, so uh, they, they didn't stick around long. But in the original games, they were there, and I guess that's smart enough. Okay, this next one drives me insane, and maybe it shouldn't count. I probably don't even need to talk about this one in the video, but you know what? I feel like I have a personal vendetta I need to settle here. Domino's Pizza. I've had my account with Domino's Pizza Portal or whatever hacked twice and some other persons redeemed my pizza. I contacted Domino's. They were like, we take your pizza portal security very seriously. They got my account set up again with a new email, got my points back, and literally a couple hours later, someone else redeemed my points. So I was already on rocky waters with Domino's. But then Domino's comes around a couple of years later and they're like, hey, if you have student loans, 
free pizza on us. Me being a person who has student loans I need to repay. Yeah, my English degree is doing me wonders right now. Was like, hey, that that's cool. I sign up while supplies last. I get an email saying, you're in, congrats. Here's your coupon code for a pizza. The next day I go to redeem it. The code doesn't even work. What is Domino's doing? This brings me to my point here. Out of spite, because I refuse to eat Domino's now, I went to Little Caesars because I had my heart set on pizza already. And just sometimes, like, you have a craving for bad cardboard flavor pizza, and that's when you go and get Little Caesars. It's like a very specific feeling you have to have. But just when you think you can get away from video games and talk about video games just for a minute, bam, right there on the front of the box, Modern Warfare 3 being promoted with Little Caesars and a QR code for, like, a hot and ready nameplate or something. And apparently you can, like, get extra bonuses in-game, but you have to order multiple pizzas with Little Caesars, and that's not happening. But I do have to say, the box art on the Little Caesars pizza box promoting Modern Warfare 3, very interesting. Obviously, they don't want to, like, incorporate the violence side of the game, despite the fact that it's Modern Warfare 3. So instead, they went the route of having some of the campaign characters, like Price, Soap, and Ghost, like, running through Rust, which, I mean, that's pretty iconic. I mean, honestly, besides, like, Shipment, Nuketown, maybe Terminal, Rust is, like, the next most famous Call of Duty map. So, I don't fully hate this one. I just also wanted to use this as an opportunity to get angry at Domino's. In EverQuest 2, players could actually order a real pizza while playing the game, a feature introduced around 2005. This unique service was a result of a collaboration between Sony Online Entertainment and Pizza Hut. How it worked was quite simple. Players could type the command slash pizza into the game's chat, which would open a browser window to Pizza Hut's online ordering page. From there, players could place their order from delivery without having to leave their gaming sessions. This feature was available to players in the United States and was one of the earliest examples of integrating real-world services directly into a video game. And I mean, it was kind of bare bones. I mean, you type in slash pizza and it opens a web page. It's just a macro, but it was still interesting. Okay, also, can we talk about how wild 2008 was for EA of all places? Okay, maybe not that wild. Of course EA is gonna take some money and do some weird stuff with advertising if they have the opportunity to, but I didn't expect to see presidential campaign ads for Barack Obama. Yeah, the Obama presidential campaign went hard and made a deal with EA and had presidential advertisements, billboards, menu screen ads, and others sprinkled across multiple EA games, encouraging players to vote for the 2008 presidential elections in the United States. You could see this in Madden, Skate, NHL, and others, and it was obvious they were going after the younger voting crowd, and I mean, maybe it worked really well here. I am somewhat surprised this didn't turn into a bigger meme back in the day, because this was a very risky play. I mean, years later, Hillary Clinton tried to do that Pokemon go to the polls thing. But I'm trying to figure out how we get them to have Pokemon go to the polls. And we all know that backfired and cost her the election. Still, it's always interesting to be like, hey, yeah, Obama was in my Xbox game. If you remember back to 2013, Battlefield 4 had a pretty rough launch. Everybody was kind of talking about kind of clowning on the game for being bad and crashing all the time, all the bugs and stuff like that. And the cycle of negative discussion around Battlefield 4 would continue in early 2014 when they added in-game ads promoting the Need for Speed movie. These ads would show up on the loading screens and on the main menu, just straight up being like, hey, go see this movie in theaters. And for EA, themselves it wasn't uncommon that they would do an in-game ad like this doing in-game ads for nhl fifa madden or other sports games but this was one of the first times one of the non-sports games got an in-game ad promoting something and trying to sell tickets and it was pretty questionable because you pay as high as 110 dollars for the full game and then you get in-game ads that you can't get rid of though i do have to add sources aka sauce told me that this movie was pretty banger to ea it probably made sense to promote this movie because it was one of their video game IPs. But even if it did make sense on paper, it just fueled the negativity around Battlefield 4 at the time. Okay, what about Enter the Matrix, the video game? Uh, this one was actually pretty simple, but one that you don't really see advertised in games nowadays, or really their marketing campaigns way different than it used to be. But yeah, Powerade had some vending machines placed around in this Matrix game, which was kind of interesting. And then over in a completely different franchise, we have Splinter Cell Chaos theory and this one actually did a little double brand deal crossover event in their game with axe body spray and uh airwaves gum so uh, i guess if you want to smell like sam fisher himself you just 
I guess he sprays Axe on himself as his deodorant. That sounds more like a 2010s teenager locker room instead of this like tactical secret agent. But whatever, I digress. You know, I really enjoy making these types of videos when we find out things on the overall subject topic that we didn't know prior to, you know, researching and getting ready for the video. Like obviously when we sit down in the think tank to come up with a topic like this, we have ideas in mind. But then when we dig a little deeper, there's the things that we never knew existed that are just completely wild. Like Fantasy Star Portable 2. First of all, a game I didn't even know existed, but it has this like intense fight alongside Colonel Sanders and Pizza Hut? Like, this crossover is absolutely insane. One, I did not know existed or didn't know that we needed to have exist, but hey, this one is pretty cool. If we want to look at some of the older games that have existed out there, we could look at a game like Theme Hospital that had like a Kit Kat branded hospital, which is an interesting idea. Okay, these next ones are very uh, out there, I guess, but in both Dead Rising 2 and Mafia 2 of all video game series have very interesting collections collectibles in the form of Playboy magazines that you can go collect and look at. We obviously can't show them for a video because we got to keep this, you know, monetizable, but still an interesting idea for collectibles that players can go after, I guess. Over in the game Jurassic Park Operation Genesis, there are Sunkiss and Hawaiian Punch stands available in that game, which, I mean, it's just an interesting, like, choice for a drink to be represented, I guess. I mean, the drink of Jurassic Park. I don't think of, like, Hawaiian Punch, but hey, I mean, they paid for the marketing. Why not throw it in the game? In an interesting attempt to promote electric vehicles, SimCity 2013 added the Nissan Leaf charging station as a free DLC item that players could place in their cities. It provided happiness to the Sims living nearby. The charging station didn't require any electricity, water or workers to function and also didn't produce any pollution, making it an attractive addition for players looking to boost their city's happiness and green credentials. I think essentially it was just like a little cheat code because you'd place them and then your citizens would be happy. It was an easy and free way to kind of upgrade your city a little bit. But to be honest, I don't know if this one works. I'd be surprised if there's a single person that was like, I gotta get a Nissan EV because the Nissan Leaf charging station in SimCity 2013 is my favorite item. I don't think that person could exist or would ever exist, but maybe I'm wrong. And then one that's completely different from anything else we've talked about so far, uh, Capcom Final Fight promoted a Slipknot album. Yeah. I mean, why not? You know, Slipknot is a pretty popular band. Why not throw it in a Capcom game, I guess. Now, to be fair, for this video, we haven't even touched yet on the games that are literally just brand tie-ins. Like, games that were made exclusively for the fact that they wanted to help promote the game itself. Did you guys ever hear of the game Yo Noid? Yeah, we're going back to Domino's here with uh, my distrust for that company. Back in the late 80s and early 90s, Domino's decided to adopt this creature as their mascot for some reason. The commercials were already creepy enough, but then they decided, let's take it a step further and take a game that was completely unrelated in Japan for the Nintendo Entertainment System called Kamen no Ninja Hanamaru, and then they overhauled the game's aesthetic and visuals and replaced the main character with the Noid and like put this storyline where like this green character called Mr. Green runs around New York causing havoc and it's up to the Noid to save the day and save everyone and get pizza or something. Honestly, I can't be bothered to look into whether or not this game was actually a really good game or not. I assume the later. But I also don't know if the Noids ever really had a good reputation. Like, for instance, back in 1989, a year before this game came out, a mentally unwell man in Chambly, Georgia, believed that the Avoid the Noid campaign was personally directed towards him and was antagonizing him. It just so happened the guy's last name was also Noid. And he ended up going to a local Domino's with a firearm and held two employees hostage for over five hours. Fortunately, no one was hurt, but in the five hour standoff with the police, he demanded Domino's gave him $100,000 in a white limousine as a getaway transport for him. He like wanted a book delivered. And then when he got hungry, he made the two captive employees make him pizzas. While he ate the pizzas, the hostages escaped and then he surrendered to the police. The man was found not guilty by reason of insanity. And slowly after this, Domino's started phasing out the use of the Noid, though the character would return occasionally over the years. He showed up in a random Crash Bandicoot on the run as a tie-in promotion for the restaurant as a playable character, which was unexpected. And that's probably the most recently we've seen the Noid. But man, what a character. 
Back in the PlayStation 1 days, Pepsi made a game for Pepsi Man. Honestly, you can't hate this game. This is just like such an interesting concept in itself. And the fact that this even exists is incredible. Okay, interestingly enough, all of Pepsi Man is voiced in English despite the fact that the game never saw an American or European release. It was a Japanese exclusive game. Apparently, Pepsi Man was a commercial failure, but I mean, they created such an iconic mascot that is just over the top and incredible. This game also does have a little bit of a speed running community around it. So, hey, there was some good that came out of this one. But yeah, if you're confused on how this game plays, it does kind of play like a simple version of Crash Bandicoot, except, hey, we get to be Pepsi Man. Sega Genesis had McDonald's Treasureland Adventure, where you get to play as Ronald McDonald. This game reviewed at kind of middle of the road, and it is an interesting concept in general, having you play as, well, this guy. But for a weird mix of a platform, run and gun style game, it is interesting how competent the game is, but also it's definitely not like the greatest game ever, like a must play game that everyone needs to experience. Still, oddly enough, it's one of the better licensed games from that era, and I'm sure some people who grew up with McDonald's Treasureland Adventure on their Sega Genesis have fond memories. I just don't know if it's worth going back and checking the game out as much. Nowadays, if you're like a vintage video game collector, maybe try it out, I don't know. On the flip side, years later in 2006, we would see Burger King do their own video game marketing campaign where they took their Burger King mascot as terrifying as he was and gave him a whole video game series. It was a Sneak King released for the Xbox and the Xbox 360. The game was essentially sold with the purchase of value meat Meals, and you play as the Burger King's mascot in this like stealth food delivery type thing. This whole game only exists because they took the idea of I Love Bees, which was like this Halo 2 promotional alternate reality game that was hugely popular back in 2004. We did a whole long video breaking that down a couple years ago if you ever want to see something incredibly long with a deep rabbit hole. And they paired up with the subservient chicken campaign that was a big advertising campaign through Burger King. And it's kind of interesting the fact that this game was available for $3.99 with any purchase of a Burger King value meal, this game would end up becoming the third best-selling Xbox original game, just selling under Halo 2 and Halo Combat Evolved. It outsold Fable and Grand Theft Auto 3 and Vice City. How does this happen? I don't know. I guess it was a cheap game, which made it really accessible. For whatever reason, after that, Burger King decided to lean into this video game marketing thing, so they did a pocket bike racer game, which wasn't as popular a Sneak King, and Big Bumpin', which also starred the Burger King, and this one was more of a Bumper Cars inspired game this time around. Yeah, it was just interesting that these three games existed and were as successful as this whole campaign ended up being altogether to promote Burger King more, and ultimately I think Burger King actually did decently in 2006 sales-wise, so I guess this was a win across the board. Burger King would do a couple other interesting promotions over the years, most notably a couple of years ago to promote Call of Duty Modern War. Modern Warfare 2019 and Modern Warfare 2 22, they did a tie-in with Burger Town itself, which Burger Town is like the Modern Warfare equivalent of Burger King. It's themed after the restaurant, very obviously. It was a parody back in the first Modern Warfare 2 game. It was a zombies map in Advanced Warfare, and slowly had more and more appearances across the Call of Duty franchise until, hey, they finally decided to just like lean into it and work directly with Burger King. And I think in the 2019 version of the game, they rebranded an entire Burger King King to Burger Town and change their social media handle and all that. And then in the 2022 game, there was a little t-shirt skin you could only get if you went to certain Burger Kings and spent money a couple of times. It uh, looks like this. Also, the Burger King King himself appeared in Fight Night Round 3 for some reason. Elijah mentioned already earlier that there was a Metal Gear game that had a Doritos and Mountain Dew crossover. And that game was Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker. Now, usually when I think of Metal Gear, I think of this series military story set within this complex world. But for some reason with Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker for the PSP, they decided to put in a bunch of brands. And there was more brands than just Doritos and Mountain Dew. There was also Pepsi, Axe, Sony Walkman, and the Weekly Shonen magazine, all product placements within the game. All these crossovers would play out in the form of in-game items, like it could be a consumable or it could be a shirt with the logo on it that you could wear. Also, this promotion is responsible for this screenshot that I found with Doritos branded soldiers, which made me wonder how far away are we from the military actually wearing like NASCAR style outfits with a bunch of brand sponsorships. Okay, so what else do we have at this point? We do know that the WWE has been trying to up their presence online 
time in dare I say some unique ways I always think it's weird when we see WWE characters showing up in like first-person shooter games like Rainbow Six now has a few characters from WWE but then even weirder is when you go in a game like Fall Guys and you see some WWE characters just chilling over there as a Fall Guys skin that you can pay money to buy I mean I guess this technically counts as a brand tie-in just not necessarily one that people were like eager to try to get all right and we've gotten this far in this video without talking about probably the biggest elephant in the room probably one of the biggest companies to take on a lot of these brand deal marketing type campaigns and tie them into their online game experience but very obviously Fortnite has this big reputation of promoting various things over the years and they've built up quite a decent catalog of available characters that you can play as from different universes and franchises and tied that together with their own art style and gameplay experience it is always interesting and maybe a little predictable when they do these big massive crossovers like back when Star Wars was seeing movie releases regularly the Star Wars events in Fortnite were absolutely hype getting to go see a new Star Wars movie and then have it followed up with Fortnite gameplay that gives you lightsabers where you get to just fight it out and they're super overpowered but everyone has access to them so it becomes balanced in a weird way yeah those were the days in some way or another that's not the only thing Fortnite's known for they do crossovers all the time whether it's promoting musicians promoting movies or other brand products they're in there all over the place and it is kind of thought-provoking to think about how far Fortnite could potentially go one day the more tie-ins and brand deals they end up trying to establish Establish with each new update some of the stuff whether it's to promote an anime or something else like a movie or a TV show have been pretty solid so far at least they're designed well and they appear like the character they're based on even if they are in that stylistic anime setting but we'll just have to hang in there and see what type of art style they take moving forward with new seasons down the road now of course one thing we haven't actually talked about too much in this video are just like the regular expected brand tie-ins for a lot of games like we looked at some of the goofy things but there are some very commonplace brand tie-ins that we regularly see like um in gran turismo for example there's like advertisements and banners all over the place for like a new panasonic television and we also see it with a lot of the vehicles we assume that one way or the other there's probably some sort of like deal being made i don't know luke do you think that it goes from where we have the game developer and publisher making the deal with like a car manufacturer to use the cars in their game or do you think the car manufacturer wants the publicity of their cars being in the game well actually i do think it's probably like 50 50. i feel like sometimes the car manufacturer just approaches like a game publisher and then they make a deal you know i feel like it would be hard for a publisher to just search out a certain car because usually it's like to promote new versions of cars right or like right. to promote like different versions of cars that maybe don't sell as well like we saw in black ops with like the black ops jeep or whatever, whatever. right right for example <laughs> and i mean uh, one example i can immediately think of is and this isn't video game related but when the marvel movie started audi struck a deal with the marvel movies right i remember that yeah tony stark has been driving an audi in all the movies and their right. sales went up crazily our movie theater had like a bunch of like audis just like lined up in front of the theater for some reason when uh Endgame came out it was it was actually wild it's kind of sick dude. um well it's interesting Gran Turismo I think is known for having like a ton of Toyota cars I wonder if there's some sort of like limited exclusivity where it's like we get to use the most Toyota vehicles in our game if you guys agree or something true 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 they're both uh like Toyota is a Japanese company right and Gran Turismo is made by a Japanese developer so right but I'm sure Toyota is also in like Forza right surely you there's not a Forza game that doesn't have Toyota. Yeah. I guess they'd be cutting themselves short if they wouldn't put themselves into Forza, you know. Yeah, or if Microsoft couldn't make that deal. <laughs> they tried to, like, do a game without Toyota. I don't know. It could go... I really genuinely don't know how the gaming industry works. If someone knows... The car deal seems to be all over the place, especially with, like, the Mercedes Mario Kart thing. And I think right. we talked about it earlier, but it's just crazy, you know what I mean? How far it goes. Then, at the same time, there's other examples of things that we didn't talk about. But uh, sports games specifically. Madden, for example, we know that there are like a lot of the brands and branding things that they have, like the jerseys, the uh, like shoes. They're like their official like Nike brand a lot of the time. Or like all of the pads, if you're making your custom character, like there's the regular standard pads and then the Nike pads that look cooler. And obviously they, there's some sort of deal going on between Nike and EA. I just wonder, is it EA trying to get the rights to use 
something that is used in the NFL like Nike? Or is it Nike being like, let's put our stuff out there? I feel like it's Nike towards Madden more so than Madden towards Nike. Right. It, it probably is like a bundle deal with the NFL, right? Oh, I didn't even think of that. Because EA has the exclusivity that like it just includes all their branding maybe yeah i would assume when like a new sponsor signs on the nfl you know there's like talks about if they're going to be included in the madden games already like right away probably like it's in this it's in the paperwork yeah i guess that would make sense they do have in the madden games like the realistic stadiums and a lot of the times the stadiums are named after like a company so it's hard to avoid it it's it's not like flight simulator where like they'll block out logos if you're like flying over something that's like very obviously owned. I've taken Flight Simulator to Disney World before, and it doesn't look like Disney World. They they've removed all of the, like the Disney image imaging or whatever. <laughs> Damn. I don't think that's the case with Madden. I think that they can embrace those types of logos showing up. So in their recreations, which aren't even like real life pictures or whatever. So I guess yeah, I guess that would make sense that it could be something just done universally ahead of time through the NFL rather than going directly with EA. But once again, I don't know how IP licensing works. That reminds me though, while we're talking about sports games, remember when Jake from State Farm was in one of the NBA 2K games? I did not know that. What? It's like this hub world right. and you walk around, it's like a mall and there's like a State Farm store and you can approach Jake from State Farm and he talks to you like in game. That is crazy. I'm glad you're bringing that up now because that's like something we should have put in the video earlier. Yeah, I just remembered it. Yeah. I'm glad we remember to put it in now. <laughs> that's absolutely insane. Well, I, I, I can actually tell you about one that's a little lazier and actually not in-game, but when Soul Calibur 4 came out in 2008, the game manual came with like two coupons. For what? One was for Church's Chicken. You got $1 off a value menu, and the other one is $10 off a $50 purchase at Journeys, which is like a shoe store. I mean, why not, right? Like, let's get that advertising in some way or another. I, I guess I did. I didn't expect Church's Chicken to really be associated with some of the stuff for brand related things but i mean i guess it works why not i had never heard of them i had to look them up i was like who the hell i mean i think they're it depends on where you live if we don't have a church chickens near where we are i mean we do have some north from us if you uh know what i mean why do you have to say like that like i don't know I'm like we live on like the boundary of the badlands and like <laughs> we have to like <laughs> you make it sound so like <laughs> ominous yeah <laughs> north of north. us if you know what i mean <laughs> okay and then uh there was another brand like brand appearances brand cameos i don't know what the right term for that would be but in a lot of the skateboarding games like tony hawks underground the skate games besides the big like t-mobile thing we talked about but like skateboarding brands obviously show up in a lot of skateboarding games you'll see like element or any of the other ones that do show up we see it with shoes like vans they have their shoes in there uh we also see like sometimes clothing brands did some stuff with uh the rock band and guitar hero games for a minute not something you would think about normally but if you think about it, yeah, I guess it makes sense. The character creation was a big part of those games. I think they had real instruments too. Oh, you mean like like real points, like Fender and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah, and like Roland keyboards and Rock Band 3 maybe. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense for sure, I mean. Yeah, and then the clothing for your characters, obviously what we said, probably did some sort of tie-in as well with that. Uh, I think they probably, or from what I've seen in Guitar Hero, they had a lot of like vintage clothes, you know what I mean? Like that Rock Bands would wear, like, so it kind of added a certain level of like authenticity to some of the stuff. Dude, what do you think the like rock band Guitar Hero payout is? Like if you got your song featured in one of those games? It probably depends on how big of a band you are. I assume like someone like Metallica probably gets better money than, you know, someone who's like a smaller artist maybe. Like when they put OK Go in rock band. I mean, OK Go is already established band, but back then they were just known really for that treadmill song. And uh, I don't know, I thought it was interesting that that was in the first Rock Band game. I just remember that from when that game came out. Yeah, and I mean, with the first one, they probably got less payout than like bands with the third or fourth one because of how popular it became. True, yeah, that would make sense. And I'm sure they also get a bump in people like buying the songs, especially back then on like iTunes and stuff. Right. I definitely bought some songs from Rock Band I'd never heard before until I played Rock Band. And then one of the most interesting merchandising deals but it was a huge market for a while, and then it died very quickly. But it was for a fat minute, something people spent a lot of money on, but that's the Xbox avatar marketplace. You know how you could get like a ton of clothes for like free or for 
cheap back in the 360 days. Or achievements. Or for achievements or, or yeah, like tons of stuff like that. But slowly over time, they started rolling out like real life brands and you could pay real money to have your Xbox avatar wear these clothes. It was kind of like some pre-metaverse type thing, I guess. But I remember seeing some expensive things for your Xbox avatar out there. I mean, actually, when you put it like that, it does sound like Mark Zuckerberg's wet dream. I think, and I think maybe that's why so many people are hesitant with embracing the whole like metaverse and like oh your characters in this real world look how crazy this is because it's been done so many times like these ideas that they think are brand new like being able to buy clothes for your character or your avatar like we've done it on the xbox we did it with our Miis on the nintendo wii like i mean maybe not to the fullest extent but like it's almost like people who've never seen a video game before are working on this thing and they're finally realizing this technology is there when like, I don't know, Gary's Mod existed, VR Chat existed, Second Life existed, Roblox existed. We saw that one video with the Mexican Fiesta with the <laughs> knife and stuff. Play, play the clip here, just like cut and play the clip right now. See, that was incredible. Do you think some of that, uh, you know, like negative you know, feeling towards the metaverse and stuff comes from like, it's a little too on the nose, right? Like when it's your Xbox avatar and you're like, just like, it's for fun for your video game, right? You're like, okay, I sure I'll buy this t-shirt for like $3 or something. But then it's like, when it's a whole point of the game or the thing you're doing, right? It almost like, it's too on the nose. I can see that. It's like spelling it out, you know what I mean? And it kind of ruins it. Yeah. It's like VR chat, right? You're, you typically already have a VR set up or you have a gaming computer or something, right? And your primary use of that device is probably not just VR chat at first. Like maybe you get addicted to VR chat and then you play it a bunch. But when you're first like getting into it, you're probably using your computer VR set for something else. And then you're jumping onto VR chat. And then that's like supplementary and maybe eventually you get really into it, you make friends and that that's the thing. But I feel like there's too much of a gap for like the metaverse where like, you, like, why would you want to go and, like, look at some of these things unless you're already on the platform? Like, you're not using the platform yet. I think Roblox has a ton of social places because, like, people go on there to play games and then when they're bored they, like, find some random thing like that. Fortnite has a lot of social things too now. But they started out as a battle royale. They didn't start out trying to push the social side of things. Speaking of Fortnite, that's a big, big talking point. Kind of an elephant in the room that we were kind of holding off to go over until this part of the video. But Fortnite's, like, brand crossover promotional events is probably, like, off the charts if you think about it. And we really dig into the nitty gritty about what Fortnite does. Fortnite has so many events related to cosmetics, but beyond cosmetics, they'll do like full on like in-universe tie-in events for films and television and stuff like that. The most notable one to me was when they did all the Star Wars stuff. That's like what actually really got me into Fortnite for a little while. There was a ton of hype about the Star Wars movie coming out. Then there was like a ton of stuff going on in Fortnite, Star Wars related. These lightsabers are really fun to use, very overpowered, but they're easy enough to find where it was like a full-on lightsaber battle at the end, which was kind of cool. And I think like it's just very interesting how Fortnite is kind of led the charge with a lot of what is possible with some of these marketing crossovers. I feel like other places that would take on that approach would be like, that means they want uh, pop-up ads or, you know, the banners all over the place in the game. And I think doing something in the game that's a part of the game is way better than like trying to just like slap a banner in the background. Like we saw with like a lot of the EA stuff earlier in the video. They also do like, concerts in Fortnite, right? Which is also a big crossover thing usually. Right, we've had a couple. Yeah, there was Travis Scott, uh, Marshmallow, I think. And it's been leaked that an Eminem one is coming. That's gonna be so wild. <laughs> I don't even know how they're gonna do that. You wanna hear one of the weirdest, uh, you know, in-game promotions I've ever read about that I found out about just like 10 minutes ago? Back in 2006, right? On Counter-Strike Source, you know, you could equip your custom spray, right? You could just like use a picture and just spray it on the wall when you're on the server, right? And it would show up for other players. So what Subway did is they went in, equipped one of their ads as a spray, and then went onto a bunch of public servers and just sprayed down their Subway ad on the <laughs> server. And then it got so bad that a uh, Valve threatened with a lawsuit. You know what I mean? And then they stopped doing it. That's insane. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds really weird and I couldn't find that much information about it, but it seems like it's a real thing from 2006. There's a couple news articles. And Subway was aggressive with their brand promoting. They're trying to promote the 249 daily special. It sounds like a good special. I, I mean, dude, I take a 249 special at Subway. Do you remember, didn't McDonald's or Burger King also release a game? Like a Game Boy Color game? I mean, there's, there's multiple McDonald's games, yeah. Uh, and multiple Burger King games. 
No, but but not not no no like a recently like in the last like oh recently for Game Boy. Yeah, they they released like a game to coincide uh, the Grimace fifty second birthday or whatever. What was it like? It was I don't know like a side scroller with a skateboard or something. Yeah, I don't know. They released the ROM file so you could play it on like an emulator, but it technically could work on real hardware also if you flashed it onto a cartridge. So most people probably just experienced it as like the as a ROM, but. If you, I mean, if you wanted to flash on the cartridge, it would work like a real game if you were really to write it. So that is absolutely wild, I think. Do you remember the 2006 Scarface game? It was called like, The World Is Yours. I think I remember, yeah, I know something about it, yeah. It's like a, it's like basically a GTA clone. Maybe it's a little different than a GTA clone. It's a good game, don't get me wrong. They did some, they did some stuff differently to set itself apart from just being a GTA clone. But this game, partnered up with the online casino and sports betting website called Bodog. Bodog branded machines, poker machines, slot machines, blackjack tables in the game, right? So far, so good. Sounds pretty standard, right? Yeah, like just brand recognition? Yeah, just brand recognition. And then they took it even a step further and they put the founder of Bodog as an NPC in the game. Whoa, okay. <laughs> That's interesting. That reminds me of like the like Slipknot being featured in one of the games we talked about earlier. There was a game I was trying to remember to talk about, but there was also we didn't have time to talk about in the video, but just so you guys out there know, there is a Chester Cheetah game that came out back in the day. It looks, you know, like this. It's like a side scrolling whatever you want to call this. But yeah, why not promote, you know, Cheetos with a little mascot character? I guess I guess you can do it. It's it's like the the noid all over again for Dominoes. Hey, this was kind of a fun video topic, I think. Yeah. I had fun looking into all this and researching it. Uh, if you're watching this far into the video, appreciate you guys sticking around and uh, watching this type of stuff. We're still trying to get our our feel for how this new format works, but I do enjoy like just chilling, chatting about stuff kind of at this section of the video and get to kind of flesh out on some things that maybe we didn't get to in the video. So let us know what you guys think about in the comments down below. Otherwise, huge shout out to our patrons supporting our channel. If you want to have your name featured in the credits of our videos, all you have to do is just pledge a couple bucks our way. Helps us out and uh, you could put that on like your portfolio that you're like a producer for Rocket Sloth. I don't care. Like financial producer. I mean, that's good. I'll we'll let it go. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching. If you're new, you watch this far, make sure you subscribe. If you're on the TV, uh, I know it's like an extra step, but if you hit the subscribe button, you'll see more of us and we're like the perfect background noise for whatever you're up to. Uh, anyways, thanks so much for watching. Uh, we'll see you guys all next time with a brand new video. Also check out Opera GX. Um, thanks for sponsoring the video. That was cool too. Uh, cool. All right. See you guys later. Bye. Bye-bye.